So like I said, we use cosine law when we can't use sine law. So there's two conditions where we can't use sine law. Okay. So cosine law, we use in the case of, we have, so the first situation is if we have all three sides and no angles. So remember that when you have sine law, you need to know an angle and its opposite side, right? Always need to know at least one angle. So in the event that you have only three sides and no angles, you're going to need to use so the cosine law. Okay, there's one other situation. And that is the situation where we have an angle, but it's not the angle of, we don't know any op the opposite to it. So what that means is, is we have the included angle between two sides. So if we had, I'll use a highlighter here. So for example, if I knew this side C, I knew side B, and I knew angle A. Okay, this angle here. If that was the case, it's almost like a P symbol. Two sides and the, and the angle in, be, in between. In that case, do you know an angle and its opposite side? No. We don't, the one angle that we have, we do not know its opposite side. So those are the two situations we're going to use cosine law. And there's two formulas, and those formulas, guess where you can find them? Formula sheet. Yeah, the formula sheet. Okay, so let's just go through some information here. Sometimes we don't have enough information with the sine law, that's what I said. And so that's when we're going to use cosine law. Visually, the cosine law forms a peace sign or a, or a pitchfork. To find an angle, you need to know all three sides. The cosine law is also known when you have two sides and the included angle. So that's exactly what we just said. So the, the, what is an included angle? An included angle means the angle between two sides. So when I say included, I'm talking about the angle between two sides. Okay, so if I had, just like the triangle above, <coughs> A, B, C, okay, and I, I knew... What I knew was side CB and angle A. So if I knew side C, I knew side B, and I knew angle A. Okay? And that's the case where we use cosine law. And that's where we're going to use this first formula that you can find on your formula sheet. It's when we're looking for the other side. So in this case, if we were looking for side A, if this was my unknown, Okay, the formula works like this. So you can see it's b squared plus c squared. So the one side that we're looking for, a squared, any side, is equal to the other two sides squared. So in this case, b squared plus c squared. Minus 2 times the product, bc, of the other two sides, and then cos of the angle opposite of what your, your unknown. That's the formula. That's on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it. If we're looking for side B, we can easily adapt the formula. So if I wanted side B, B squared, okay, using this kind of model, what two side squares would I be adding together? A squared plus C squared, good, minus two times the product of the two other sides, so that would be AC and cos of B, B plus B, the angle that's opposite of what you're, you're unknown. Okay, it's the same format. If I was looking for C, C squared is equal to, what are the other two sides? A squared plus B squared <laughs> minus two times the product of those two sides, AB, and cos of C in this case, because you're looking for side C, you're going to go cos of the angle opposite of what you're looking for. So those are the formulas. The, only the one that I've boxed is on your formula sheet. So can you just assume that uh, side x is always equal to side x? Yes, and that's what you could do. Yeah, if you want, you could, if you're, if, for example, if I had this triangle, and if it was labeled, say, fgh, 
right? You can just make your unknown A and relabel it for yourself if you want. It doesn't matter. You can always re change the letters so it matches the formula sheet. No, who says you can't? Why not, right? So you can do that as well. All right, so this guy. It's nice to make your unknown in cosine law an A because then it matches the formula. Now, could you use sine law here? Do you know an angle and its opposite side? No, so you have to use cosine law. So we're going to make this A, and then the other two sides, does it matter who B and C are? It doesn't. So we can call 15B, 18C, or vice versa, it won't make a difference. So let's use this formula. I like this formula. So notice that there is no division in this formula. So you're less likely to make a mistake with your calculator, which is nice. It's awful losing marks because you type something in wrong in your calculator. It's like tragic. Because then I knew you understood it, but something went wrong. Okay, so a squared equals 15 squared plus 18 squared. So the two sides squared minus 2 times the product of those two other sides. So 2 times 15 times 18 cos of A, which is 56 degrees. Okay, grab your calculators. Fifteen squared, type this in, it's eighteen squared. Minus 2, you don't have to use brackets, you can just use a time symbol, times 15, times 18. And you don't actually have to go times cos, you can just go cos and automatically it knows multiplication. Cos 56. You don't even have to close the bracket for the 56. Isn't that nice? Okay, does that answer make sense for our triangle? No. Because, what do we still have to do? Square root it. So there's one extra step. We have to square root it. So square root our answer. So technically you could type this in all at once. You could go, if I wanted to type it in all at once, I'll show you in a really quick in a second. That does that make sense for our for our triangle? Yeah, that logically makes sense. 15.7 oh 71? 72 Johnson. There's no use. So if you wanted to, you could actually go square root 15 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 15 times 18 cos of 56. You can type it in all at once. That's kind of nice. If you wanted to. Okay. So do you want to try this one? With that formula? Yeah? Okay, solve for x. We'll call that a. And the other two sides, b and c, it doesn't matter who. I'll just plot so you can see. So I'm not sure if you typed it in separately or all at once. Anyone try typing it in all at once? Any of you? So square root 21 squared plus 17 squared minus 2 times 21 times 17 plus 110. You get the same thing? 31.2? I guess 2, 1, right? Two decimal places? No, we didn't. So if you did it two steps, that's fine. Type it in, then square root it. The biggest mistake students make is forgetting to square root. So really think about the logic. Is my, is my answer reasonable? Right? If you got, well, what is 31 squared? It was like 900 and some? That doesn't make sense for a length, right? Is my answer reasonable? Don't forget to square root. That's the biggest mistake. It's a silly mistake students make, but it happens often. Or just square root in the whole thing and you're good. Okay, so what about finding an angle? So what if we know all three sides? Okay, this is the formula that's on your formula sheet right here. So if I knew, what if I knew all three sides, A, B, and C, and I was looking for angle A? The formula is set up that it's the 
when I say other two sides, so if I'm looking for other angle A, the other two sides would be sides C and B. If I was looking for angle B, the other two sides would be A and C. So not the one opposite to it. So the other two sides square minus, you're always going to be subtracting the side that's opposite of what you're looking for. So notice how it's in this one. Cos of A is equal to B squared plus C squared, B squared plus C squared, and I'm subtracting A squared. I'm subtracting the side that's opposite of what I'm looking for. Okay. And then divided by 2 times those two other sides, B and C. Really, it's the other formula rearranged. It's the same formula. It's just been rearranged for you. Isn't that nice? This is science. It probably wouldn't have re rearranged it for you. Okay, so for example, if I was looking for cos of B, what would the formula be instead? A squared plus C squared, and we would be subtracting B squared. Good. And 2 times AC. Easy. If I was looking for angle C, B squared plus C squared. Oh, 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 oh. Miss Johnson. What two sides? B squared and A squared. So A squared plus B squared minus C squared divided by 2AB. So those are our formulas. So if the triangle isn't labeled for you, it's easiest if you make your unknown A, right? Because that's this is the one that's on the formula sheet. So let's make the unknown angle A, and it's all lined up for us. Or you can relabel it if you want. So let's call this one A, meaning which side is letter A? 15, that's the one that only really matters, right? Because that's the one we're going to subtract. Does it matter who's B and C? No, because we're going to be adding those, so it doesn't matter. Okay? So let's sub it into this formula. Cos of A, or theta, whatever you want to call it, equals... N squared plus 20 squared. It's important that we're subtracting who? The A. So we're looking for angle A, we're subtracting side A. Minus the 15. Divided by 2 times the two sides? B and C. So 10 and 20. Okay. Now this one is this one as easy to type in as the previous formula. Well, you're more likely to make a mistake because it is a fraction. So depending on your calculator, um, if you're typing it in all at once, you need brackets over your numerator and brackets around your denominator, right? So that it actually does the operations we want before it divides. Some of you have a newer calculator, so you're at an advantage. Some of you, your calculator, you can go alpha y equals, right? and you have numerator over denominator. So then you don't have to worry about brackets if you have that option. If you have a silver edition and your calculator doesn't have that, there is a way to update your calculator, the software, so it will do that, as long as it's a silver edition. Okay, so those are the one that looks like this, or like the gray face, minus 15. So if you're that lucky, then lucky you. You can do numerator over denominator, and life is good. Otherwise, you need to be very careful. So bracket, 10 squared plus 20 squared minus 15 squared. Bracket divided by bracket for the denominator, 2 times 10 times 20. Okay. Question? Good. Gives you point six eight seven five. To get the same thing, which happens to be equivalent to 11 over 16. So what's our next step? Inverse, yeah. 
So there's always an extra step with the cosine law, whether it be square rooting it if you're looking for a side, or inverse cos if you're looking for an angle. There's always that extra step. Which gives you what? Four, to the nearest degree? 47 degrees, okay? The other option is you could type in your numerator, type in your denominator separately, and go inverse cos of that fraction. It's another option. Okay, I'd like you to try example four. So this is the formula. You should have had cos eight equals 0 0.9286, or maybe you had it as a fraction. And so inverse cos, your angle would be, whoops, no, that's not right. You should have had, was it a negative? Yes, that makes, there you go. Negative 0 0.575, which tells me that, yes, it can be negative. It's going to be an acute angle, or sorry, an obtuse angle, right? Because cosine, if we think about cast, in the second quadrant, if it's a, an obtuse angle, cosine ratio will be negative. So that's why you're getting an angle that's 125 degrees, okay? Also, the longest side is going to be opposite of the largest angle, always. So the largest side here was 16, so we expect it to be the largest angle of this triangle. All right, turn the page. We're not going to do every single one of these. I'm not going to own seven. Okay. Um, really quickly, let's do a triangle where we are, or it's not ABC, it's DEF. Okay, so let's draw this out. So D is 40 degrees. <laughs> okay. So D is 40. It says E is 15 and, sorry, F is 15 and E is 11. Does it matter where they go? No. Where do you want to put 15? Yeah, sure. So this will be side F. I'll draw this triangle. This, okay, and so that means this has to be angle F if we put the 15 at the top. And 11 will have to be it's side E, because this is side D, right? Opposite of angle D. So it has to be on the bottom. Okay, so in... What are we looking for? We're looking for a side, side D. So if we're looking for the a side, can we use sine law here? Do we know an angle and its opposite side? No, so we have to use cosine law. We have to use the formula that is for a side. So that was the one that was A squared equals. But there's no A here. We're looking for D. So D squared is going to equal to that, the other two sides. So E squared plus F squared. This is F, and this was E. Minus 2 times EF, or FE, cos of 40 degrees, or angle D. So that's how we change the formula. So a mul the reason why we need to do this is so there might be a multiple choice question where I change the letters and I give the new formula and you have to match which is the prop, the, like the right formula. Did they put the letters in properly? Okay, so we do need to be able to do that. 11 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 11 times 15 cos 40. So we could type that in all at once, right? Let's all try and do that. So square root that first. So we're going to type in the square root of all that. Second square root, eleven. Oh, let's try that again. Squared plus oh, fifteen squared minus two times eleven times fifteen cos forty. Did you get the same thing? Nine point six five. I didn't give you rounding instructions. So. And there's, I, I apparently hate units. 
because none of my examples have units. So. Okay, I really like this example here. Now, it's a little bit different on your sheet, I think. Right? Does it say 60 degrees for angle C? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so can you change angle C to be 45 degrees? Can you change side B to just be 4 instead of 4.2? And change uh, A to be 5? Because we're going to try something different. This question is asking for the exact value of C squared. The exact value of C squared. I like this question. We can draw it. Let's draw it. Let's go. How are we doing for time? Wow. Where's this? Okay. So let's put 45 degrees here. And I put, oh, yeah, side A is 5, side B is 4. I want the exact value of C squared. Okay. So, C squared, let's make the formula for C squared. What would it be? C squared equals the other two sides squared. A squared plus B squared minus 2 times AB cos of C. Do I want to square root this? No, no. no, it's looking for the exact value of C squared. Not C, but C squared. Exact value also gives you kind of a hint. Where did we see of exact values in this unit? Radicals, yes. Especially with angles like 45. Where did we see <gasps> special triangles? Yay! See, it sneaks up on you. So we're going to use, well, let's, let's put in what we know first and then see where, we, where that takes us. So c squared is equal to 4 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 4 times 5 cos of 45 degrees. Okay. So most of this is okay. We can figure it out with our calculator. And it'll be exact value, but the cos 45 gives us a little bit of a... Do you guys remember the 45 degree triangle that you're supposed to memorize? Two sides are 1 and the hypotenuse or 2. Okay, so cos of 45, what does that equal? Cos of 45. Adjacent over hypotenuse, or it also can be thought as x over r. What would it be? 1 over root 2, or if we want it rationalized, root 2 over 2 as an exact value. Okay, so let's sub in some stuff. What is 4 squared? 16 plus 25 minus 2 times 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20 times 2. 40, cos of 45 degrees. So we'll sub in the cos of 45 in a second. Okay, can I add 16 plus 25 and subtract 40? Or which... You have to be very careful here. The only thing we can actually add together is what? 16 and 25, because the 40 is actually being multiplied by the cos 45. So we can't just add it in with the other two. Right, with bed mass, we can't do that. So 16 plus 25, what does that give us? 41 minus 40. And, and let's replace cos 45 with what? Root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. One, which we're almost done. We can simplify this. How can we simplify this? Multiply. What's 40 times root 2 over 2? Two? 
without using our calculators because that would get rid of, that would be a decimal. What can we simplify? Right, the 40 is the same thing as 40 over 1. Or So we can, we can write that as 40 root 2 over 2 or 20 root 2. Right, that simplifies to 20 root 2. The 40 divided by 2 simplifies to a 20. So here, it's like we're reducing this to 20 and 1. We can divide those. And so our final answer would be 41 minus 20 root 2 is the exact value of c squared. So if you ever see exact values, this unit pretty much always means special triangles. Every time. All the time. How are we doing? Let's put an example of this. Wait? Let's wait. You lost me? At what point? At what point? Five? The close forty-five? Okay, so when you multiply when I multiplied forty by root two over two here, remember when you multiply fractions, we go straight across. So I got forty root two over two. And so the first day of classes we did simplifying. If it's a coefficient over a coefficient, you can divide those. And so 40 divided by 2 is 20. That's how I did that. Okay. We're skipping 7. Yay. We might skip some more. I might leave 9 and 10 for our do nows next week. Yeah. Yep. The last question I want to do today is this one. Well, we have, we'll see. Find the smallest angle of a triangle with sides 3, 5, and 7. So can you draw a triangle with sides 3, approximate it, 3, 5, and 7? Something like that, I don't know. 3, 5, and 7, doesn't matter how you draw it. Uh, well, there's not a right triangle, right? So it doesn't really matter. You could draw a larger one at top, but then the three would have to go like, you have to be like something like that, right? Okay, here's my question for you. It says find the smallest angle. Which is going to be the smallest angle? If we label, do you want to label them? I don't know. Or where, where is the smallest angle? Opposite of the smallest side. So opposite of angle or side? Three. So this is the angle that you're looking for. So to make things easy, what do you want to call that? A. Call it A. That makes it easier. So this would be A, and B and C doesn't matter. Let's go straight to subbing it in. Cos of theta, or a, equals what two, side are we, two sides are we squaring and adding together? b and c, 5 and 7. So 5 squared plus 7 squared, and we want to subtract a 3. Always subtracting the one opposite of what we're looking for. 2 times. Which two sides will you multiply together? 5 and 7. 2 times 5 times 7. So don't forget, if you're typing this in your calculator, brackets. So brackets are on your numerator, brackets are on your denominator. You should have 0.928 dot dot dot. What'd you get? To the nearest degree? 
22. Should have 22. Um, we have 15 minutes. Do you want time? Do you want to work, do some homework, or do you want to finish the lesson? We don't finish. The other two we'll do for do nows tomorrow. So do what? <laughs> homework. Yeah. Okay. So let's stop it here. Um. So we'll do these as do nows tomorrow.